Welcome, everybody, to the Believe in the Jets podcast. I am your host, Andrew Golden of Jets X Factor. As always, got my co-host, Lamont Jordan, former Jet running back with me as well. We are going to do a quick review of the very fun but ultimately disappointing Bucks game. Uh, ended 28-24 Buccaneers with a 15-second left touchdown pass from Tom Brady. Uh, we'll get into the fourth and two call a little bit, go over the the uh, debate sub- surrounding that. Um, first and foremost, Lamont, what did you think about this Bucks game uh, in general? Zach Wilson was obviously the talk of this game for the good and the bad. Um, but outside of him or including him, what was your biggest takeaway? Um, it, it's hard for me to pinpoint one big takeaway. Um, I will say this. One thing that I take away from this game, um, and I just thought about this, and I, I spoke about this in one of our previous shows, Jets fans have reasons to be excited. This is a re- listen. I like this young core players that this Jets team has. Um, looking back at the game, great first half. Great first half. We talked about you know we, we you you talked about it last week about the, the importance of the offensive line play. And yep. before before Fant went out, I'm sitting there watching the game and I'm saying to myself, you know what, the offensive line is doing a pretty good job. They're doing a really mm-hmm. good job offensively I know we talked about getting away from the the college style offense but it worked and I think that it worked because you had Barrios in the game <laughs> so um the one thing another thing that I will take away from this game is I think that this was Zach Wilson's best performance agreed I really think that this was his best performance. we talked week after week and it has been driving me crazy how many times he takes a snap and he's still drifting back in this game, whether it was under center, whether it was from shotgun, he took his steps, he stepped up in the pocket, and he rifled the ball. And I think that this was his most accurate game that he's had the entire season long. So um, the thing that I take away from this game is that, hey, listen, Jets fans have reasons to be excited about this young core. Defensively, listen, listen, it is hard to defend the perfect pass. And we talked about this coming into last week. The key defensively is going to be able to stop these crossing routes that the Bucs are going to do. They didn't do a good job of stopping the crossing routes. A couple of times they got picked. But at the end of the day, Tom Brady was throwing the football. With the exception of Aaron Rodgers, I don't think that there's another quarterback in the National Football League that will compete to, co- complete those passes that Tom Brady completed um, throughout the course of this game. So, yes, the defense lost. I mean, yes, the Jets did lose the game. But – any other quarterback besides Brady and Aaron Rodgers. And I think that the Jets walk away with the victory. Um, You know, just kind of breaking down the game. I think this game was lost in a third quarter with six minutes on the clock where they allowed Tampa to convert a third and 20. To me, that is when the Jets kind of lost things because they converted a third and 20. They converted a third and seven. And then they converted a fourth and goal. After that, all of the momentum has all the momentum was in the favor of the Bucks. So, um, and then quite naturally, listen, kick the field goal. Yep, that's the answer. Kick the field goal. Your best player on the field on that day was Berrios, and on third down he got up Gimpy. Kick the field goal. I want my coach to kick the field goal. Let's tie this thing up. Let's give ourselves a chance. Let's give ourselves a chance to win. And then for the life of me, maybe you have information on this. I have no idea whose bright idea it was with about two yards to go to run a quarterback yeah. sneak. Mm-hmm. It's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers while they have a Dominica Sue sitting in the middle. I, yeah. I, I just, I, I just <laughs> yeah. I don't get that. We talked about it before where if you're out of the playoffs, at the end of the season, you want to play teams who are going to the playoffs playoffs you want to beat them because during the playoffs your team is going to be bought up in a positive and I just think that's two weeks in a row where the Jets had two wins I think that the Jets get two wins back to back if they just go ahead and take the points what are your thoughts yeah yeah I agree Uh, I'll go in reverse order of everything that you talk about so we'll start with this fourth down call while we're on it you said hopefully I have some some expertise on what happened well luckily I do uh so I can break this down here it was an option call um so so yeah so yeah uh yeah i'll explain to that for our listeners who don't understand uh for those listening not on video lamont just rolled his eyes the most aggressive i've ever seen in the history of the believe in the jets podcast um that was an option with the sweep to barrios 
So the call was, and I don't know if this is a play that's been installed for them in the red zone or short yardage or something all season. I don't think this was something that they just put in this week. I think this is something that's been in their playbook. So the rules that Zach Wilson was following when he is executing this play are rules that he's been coached all year. So the explanation was that it's an option to Barrios. Zach Wilson lines up short yardage and is reading the A-gap. And if the A-gap appears to be open, which it appeared to be, it wasn't that open really in general. And you also have William Wilson and Indomitian Sue, who are the two defensive ends with Vita Bay in the middle and nose tackle are playing uh, stunt stunt, uh, stances. So they're cocked inside. They're crashing the A-gaps. I'm not going to get so much on Zach Wilson for not recognizing that in that situation and seeing that the A-gap is not open, even though it appeared to be. That's why he did not hand the ball to Barrios. The Jets coaches said that they did a poor job communicating to him that they wanted the ball going to Braxton Barrios no matter what. But I'm going to echo exactly what you said earlier. He got up gimping on third and two, or on, on now four after the third and six. So yeah. even if he gets the sweep, you, he's, you hope that, and to be fair, the blocking was there for it. It was there. It would have, it, you know, a full speed Barrios, no issue. But we don't know what he was like getting up after that play. He's now missed two back-to-back practices with the quad injury. We'll get into that when we preview the Bills game. But clearly that injury was serious, and he's still dealing with it. So I'm with you. Take the field goal. Because now you are in a situation where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, if they pull off this touchdown with Tom Brady that they eventually did, are going to kick the extra point and send the game to overtime. Mm -hmm. Once you go for it and you don't get it, and you are now up four, they score a touchdown or you're, whatever they were up, they went for two to make it a four-point lead so that the Jets could not tie with a field goal, make it a touchdown game, and there'd be no shot of them coming back, which is eventually what happened. You take away that possibility if you kick the field goal. You guarantee yourself overtime at worst and mm-hmm. give yourself an opportunity to keep fighting. Conversely, if you're going to be aggressive, If you're going to be the, let's win the game right now. Let's pick up these two yards. You know, we're in our own stadium. I'm not against the call. You're, you know, you've taken the defending champions to the wire. Go trust your team to win it. Have faith in your guys. I get all of that. Mm -hmm. Call a better play. Call a better play. First and foremost, offensive coordinator, Michael Ford, call a better play. After that, you take a timeout before this play happens. No one on the coaching staff grabs Zach Wilson by the face mask and says, don't you dare sneak this ball, give it to Barrios. That's what they mean when they say they did a poor job communicating, is they were hoping that he would understand in this situation that it's short yardage, they're trying to get Tampa to pinch in, they're trying to get them to be tight and condensed, and they want to give the ball to Barrios to the outside to pick up the extra yardage. Zach Wilson thought he saw an open A-gap, which is what he was coached to do, and if it was there, take the sneak. It wasn't. They also leave Joe Tryon Shayanka, the defensive end, unblocked on the other side because all of the offensive linemen are wedging down so he's able to come free off the end wrap up zach wilson and be able to pull him down so he can't even continue to fight he didn't get tackled right away he was got he was good behind the offensive line the the gap shut down he would have had to fall forward and fight but he lost the opportunity to do that because they leave the defensive end on the other side unblocked again to help with the sweep to barrios Mm -hmm. so overall it was a poor job by the coaching staff in my opinion And I'm not going to get on Zach Wilson too hard for this and not to spend any more than one sentence on this topic. He wasn't being selfish. He wasn't chasing glory. He wasn't trying to win the game himself and didn't want to give Barrios the ball because he wanted to be the guy that converted the yardage. No, he was doing what he was coached to do and he made a mistake. He's a rookie. It's going to happen. It's a Todd Bowles defense. That's what it does. It's what Todd Bowles does. So I'm not going to get on him for that. I'm going to get on the Jets coaching staff for A, not just kicking the field goal and ensuring you go to overtime at the very least. B, not calling a better play outright. And C, not getting in Zach Wilson's ear and telling him don't take the sneak. (laughs) End of discussion there. I don't want to spend any more time on this because I've spent a lot of time on this recently and I don't need to get any further into this. Let's talk about this defense. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this game-winning play. I agree. You got maybe... I'll include Pat Mahomes in that group of the two guys that, that you said for we'll throw that honey hole and, and make that game winning throw in that situation. I'm not I'll putting Pat in Mahomes in that. I'm not putting Pat Mahomes in that category. There, there's Tom Brady and there's Aaron Rodgers. Those are the only two quarterbacks 
that you put in that situation that I think is going to make those throws. To me, Patrick Mahomes from the pocket, and we saw this in the Super Bowl, that they lost to the Bucs. I think that if you want a chance to win, force him to throw the ball from the pocket. Not to not to cut you off, but no, no, I'd it, love to hear your input. Yeah, it's just to me, it, there are two quarterbacks. It's just it's it's just that simple. Oh, I just, is, yeah, I agree with them. Those are the two at the yeah, above the and two. everybody else, and a gap between them and everybody else. I'm not disagreeing yeah. with that whatsoever. That's the indisputable. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers to be, and this is more so I, I can understand <laughs> the difference between greatness and talent. Yes. Aaron Rodgers is one of the most, if not the most talented quarterback I've ever seen play, period. Brady is by far the greatest, Yes, but he's not the most physically gifted. There is a difference there. Um, Not to go on too much of a rant outside of that, to stay on the defense here. Um, Yeah, yeah, no, again, I'm with you. We could talk talk great quarterbacks all day long. I got plenty of opinions there. Uh, Shout out Dan Marino gets crapped on for no reason, just because he didn't win a Super Bowl. Um, yeah, dolphins were unbeatable with him and two five nine receivers. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, let's defensively on this last play of the game. Yes, it is a great play by Tom Brady. First and foremost, great players make great plays in the brightest moments to win games. That's what happens. That's what Tom Brady has always done. So, before we get any further, this is more about Tom Brady making a great throw than it is about the defense making a mistake. However, As we've seen with the Jets in a handful of situations, situational awareness bites them in the butt. And Elijah Riley, the Jets are playing a a cover six expansion. So you have cover three to one side of the field. You have cover six to the other side of the field. Elijah Riley is playing on the right side. That's the, the cover two side of the expansion. So he's expanding to be a cover two safety. He's getting out to cover a deep half. And there's two receivers to the, to the right side of the field. So it's two defenders on two receivers. You got the outside corner in the cloud and you got Elijah Riley up on the other side. And the inside receiver is Cameron Brate, the tight end in the slot. And they have the outside receiver. I think it was Brashad Perriman was the one that ended up catching the touchdown or him or some yeah. random oh, receiver. Guyton, uh, something like that. Guyton, yes, something, yeah. Guyton, something like that. Um, he's on the outside. And this Elijah Riley playing this deep half. Brate off the snap immediately releases to the flat and the second elijah riley sees great release to the flat he should be hauling butt to get deep he should be getting his tail out of there because there's now no reason that he needs to stay in the middle of the field and not immediately expand cameron braid is not going vertical he does not need to take away the inside seam anymore because there's no one to that area he's also got his cloud corner whose entire job is to now pick up that flat route as it expands to the sideline. So he's, he's late to expand. And that's what allows the window to happen. Even still, the window is barely there. It, it misses Riley's fingertips by inches as he's diving for the ball. And he almost was able to get outside and make a play. And if he just had the situational awareness to turn and go the second he saw Brate release to the flat, he probably picks the ball off. Yes. And wins the game and that's it. Yep. And, and game over, Jets. So that's a learning experience for Elijah Riley Mm -hmm. because he's never, that's going to be stuck in his brain for the rest of his career. And I guarantee it. So Mm -hmm. that's going to be a help. Um, Brandon Eccles got an interception. It was a bad throw by Tom Brady. Maybe the only one he threw all day (laughs) where it was just just simple cover three from the jets. He's trying to hit Gronkowski down the sideline and he underthrows it by about 10 yards. Eccles is able to go up, get another interception. Good ball skills again. Love to see it. Goes and gets the ball signed. Don't care. Happy for Brandon Eccles. You picked off the goat. Good for you. You're a rookie. You're a sixth round rookie and you picked him off. That's great. They still have no pass rush. And and it's killing them at this point. They, They still have no pass rush because the back end in general, I think the corners have started to round the corner. I think they're improving. Bryce Hall is doing a solid job covering Antonio Brown when he's going to get into your blind spot twice in the same play down the sideline on a vertical route. That's just impossible. Um, But you covered him well enough to make him quit the game. So it couldn't have been that bad. Uh, Brandon Eccles, again, solid job in coverage, makes an interception. Elijah Riley, I thought, played well in coverage outside of that um, for parts of the day. Pinnock has also had his moments of looking good in coverage. Linebacker play has improved, like you were talking about defending the crossing route. CJ Mosley had a good pass deflection defending a crossing route. I thought Quincy Williams had a couple moments of solid coverage and being able to play sideline to sideline. They did a good job in the run game. They shut down the run. 
completely stuffed the Bucks running game. They couldn't run at all. But they Tom Brady threw for 400 yards because he had no no pass rush in front of him. And you if you can't get a rush on Tom Brady, that's what he's going to do. So we'll talk about it going forward, but that's going to be a big topic uh, for this game for me is going to be what can you do to get a pass rush on a guy like Josh Allen, who's a hell of a lot more athletic than Tom Brady, let alone not being able to get a pass rush on Tom Brady. And the Bucks' offensive line is very, very good. And that's what you would expect from them. But the Bucks line or the Bills line is a bad eater. So yeah. that's, it's going to be a test. Uh, offensively, I 100% agree. Zach Wilson's best game of the year. And the one thing that you said was exactly that I was going to highlight his play in the pocket and his comfortability in the pocket looked like it had jumped a year and a half in one week. Yes, It, it was, it was amazing to me how his footwork, he was always had his feet solid in the ground. He was accurate. He was decisive. He was throwing with anticipation. He have, you have a dangerous pass rush in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with a defensive coordinator like Todd Bowles, who likes to send blitzes with a backup center in the game and eventually a backup left tackle. And you don't flinch. And you, and this is the game you learn to stand up in the pocket and, and deliver shots to Keelan Cole on a double post at the goal line right over the linebacker with a laser. This is when you hit Braxton Berrios on a little slant, four-step slant route, and it's in between the defender's hand by three centimeters practically. You can't even see the ball get caught by Berrios. He's so tightly covered, and it's that much of a strike. He was on fire. Yep. He was absolutely and totally on fire. He was decisive. He was accurate. He wasn't fooled this is another game for him without an interception his interception total has completely plummeted since he's come back to the lineup from injury and mm -hmm. you said it the young core should have fans incredibly excited before he went out with a concussion and unfortunately lost me my fantasy championship for just x factor michael carter had a 54 yard run oh he should have scored oh he, he should have scored he should have scored oh my goodness he should have scored he gets tripped up by the fingertips oh, of the end of the high step him High step him and take that thing into the end zone. He should have scored. Yes, his legs 100% went, his, agree. His legs went dead. I've seen that out of him too many times, though, Drew. It's been yeah. too many times where he's running, and it looks like he's just he just falls. And that's what happened. on. I, I just knew when I saw it, and he got to the outside. I was like, oh, my gosh, he's gone. He's gone. Jeff um, Smith picked up the last <laughs> block down the sideline, and I was like, I'm going to win. I'm going to win $400. I was, I was, I was, I was so excited. And then it was like three plays later, he goes out with a concussion and I lost by five points, but you know, Man. I'm not salty about it at all. Man. Yeah. The offense will, did great. Yeah. I will say this um, about the defense. Um, and I'm going back to Riley because it wasn't just that last touchdown play. I believe it was either the play before that or two plays prior to that where Brady threw a ball down the seam the ball was overthrown and Riley went to the offense, went to the wide receiver. If Riley just plays the ball, Tom throws the ball directly to him. But he, yeah. so Riley had two plays in a row where he could have had picks and sealed the victory for the Jets. But it was just like you said, it was just, it was just, first of all, his eyes were in the backfield and he was flat footed. Yeah. Doing that against Tom Brady. And this will be this for me. This is the this will be. I think this is the last thing that I will say about this game, and it, and it has to. And I, I got to talk about the greatness of Tom Brady, because as I was watching this game, I was just thinking to myself. First of all, when we talked last week, we said you have to bring pressure on Tom Brady, blitz him. Do not just bring your front floor front four. Blitz him. What Tom Brady did. And when I'm talking about quarterbacks in the pocket, this is there's a reason that he's the GOAT. Gold standard. No one better. He, this is the one aspect Brady is better than anybody else in the history of the NFL, and it's not even close. It's not even close. The way he was able to manipulate the secondary, most of the time when you talk about manipulating the secondary, you're talking about quarterbacks doing it with their eyes and things yep. of that nature. He, he was doing it with his, and the hips. Yes. And, yep. But he was doing it with his drop. When you sit back and you watch him take his drop, sometimes his hitch is quick. A couple of times his hitch was a lot longer. That was just him manipulating the defense. And they allowed Tom Brady to be, to be in rhythm. So, listen, Jets fans, yes. you we, let, and Listen, we lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We lost to the defending champs. A game we should have won. But it was a game that we lost because we had young players who made a couple of mistakes 
That's and at it. the end of the game, Tom Brady was the quarterback, and he man- and he showed you why he is the GOAT when it comes to the quarterback position. So all in all, I would have loved to have seen them get the victory. Um, they didn't get the victory, but I'm going to say it again. You know, the one thing I take away from this game is that Jets fans have reasons to be really excited about this young Jets team because, hey, listen, hopefully they can come and repeat it, and we're going to, we're about to talk about that. But when you talk about ending the season, playing against two teams, you just played against the defending champs. You had them on their heels and you should have walked away with the victory. So at the end of the day, um, my hat goes off to this, to this young Jets team. Yeah. I, I'm going to echo everything you said. Uh, we'll see what the last game of the season in Buffalo uh, ends up looking like, but this was the, the most impactful and influential game for the future of the Jets all year, in my opinion. This this is the this is your development game. This is the game that you're going to watch the film of over and over in the offseason and say, this is what we want to do, and this is where we need to improve to finish that game. This is the standard, even though it was a loss, you know, this is what we fight for. So I'm right there with you. Um, I think that this was a very, very important game that showed a lot of growth. It showed a lot of progress, showed a team that, again, as we've said all year, and I think this is something with Robert Sala that is just going to be a standard of his teams forever. They never stop fighting and they never back down. Yes. Never scared of anybody. Never think they're out of anything. Never think they're too small or it's the same old Jets and everything else. Doesn't Hasn't been that way. Sixth round rookie Brandon Eccles, I'm going to have the confidence to go ask Brady to sign the ball I picked off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how many other players would do that? You got to have swag as a corner and he's got it. You, you know, if anything, people never said that when they're getting on him. You know what the, the balls it takes from Eccles to do that. Uh, you know, I'm I'm right there with you. This was a very positive game for the future. Let's get into the uh, the Bills game. Last game of the season. I want to start here. I'm going to let you have the floor as a former player playing in Buffalo in December. This game is going to be quite uh, interesting weather wise. It is snowing in Buffalo currently. Uh, it's going to continue to snow tomorrow, Friday. Uh, Saturday, it's supposed to be sunny, but 13 degrees outside. And then Sunday for the game, it's supposed to be 24 degrees with participation and sleet and rain and probably snow and everything else. And you as a former Jet and former Patriot has played in uh, Buffalo in December a handful of times. So go ahead and tell us what's that like and what is this going to say about this team going forward in the future fighting for the, the crown of the AFC East? Well, listen, first of all, a team that's coming into the last game of the season, You're not going to the playoffs. This is the end of the road. First and foremost, we get a chance from a Jets perspective to see who has checked out. Who's already who who is already on a beach somewhere. Who's already back home. And who are the guys that are going to come out there and take advantage of this opportunity to put on some film? Listen, it's as simple as this. You're a free agent. If you're a free agent, this is an opportunity for you to get some film. Um, But going into Buffalo. In the month of December, oh my goodness. My rookie year, I believe it was my rookie year, we played uh, Buffalo, um, in Buffalo. And I remember walking out on the turf saying, oh my gosh, this turf is frozen. Yeah. Like the turf is frozen. Mm -hmm. Cold as heck. I mean, I mean, it's just, I I really, it's, it's hard for me to describe it, but it's one of those games where, I never really liked to wear sleeves, but it's one of those games where you want to put sleeves on. I remember being on the sideline like I like I was in most cold games, but Buffalo, I got my coat on. As soon as they say, hey, Lamont, you in? Slide the coat off, run into the game, come back to the sideline. Right back on. Right there, right there with the coat. Um, when I was with the Patriots, it was my last, last time playing in Buffalo. It was the last game of the season. Um, we knew we weren't going to the playoffs because the Cowboys had lost to the, um, the Ravens. We needed the Ravens to lose. And had we won in New England, uh, that, that, that Buffalo game would have decided whether or not we went to the playoffs or not. When you talk about this weather, all right, this is going to say a lot about this coaching staff. Yep. Forget the players. For me, this is about the coaching staff. When I played for the Patriots in 08 and we went into Buffalo for that last game of the season, there were three different weather broadcasts that we could possibly have. It was either going to be an overcast, it was either going to be rainy, or it was going to be real windy. All right. Regardless of those three, it was going to be freezing out there. 
we came into that game we came into that game with three different game plans for the weather so for me coming into this game this is all about the coaching staff how are you going to prepare your players for cold weather for windy weather for different types of precipitation for me it is all about the coaching staff getting these guys ready coming up with the right game plan so that you don't go out there and get embarrassed we talked about this before the show buffalo is playing for something so buffalo is yes. not going to just not just going to not play their players for me coming into this game last game of the season playing in buffalo i'm hoping that they get this bad weather i'm hoping to me weather. too. I want to see what they do. I want to see what they do. I want to see how Zach Wilson, and, and I know you're yeah. going to talk about that. I want to see how he handles the weather. But for me, with bad weather, coaching staff puts together a great game plan. All right. Secondary continues to play well. I think they play well against, against the Bucs. I really do think that these guys play well against the Bucs. To me, this game is about Tevin Coleman. That's what this game is about. Hope that we get bad weather where you can't really throw the ball. It becomes a game like the Buffalo Patriots game where, listen, throwing the ball, your quarterback only threw the ball three times. I like the Jets run game better than I like Buffalo's run game. And so for me coming into this last game, my very first point is if Tevin Coleman is healthy and we get bad weather, feed him the rock. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the perfect perfect lead. I I love that. We're gonna get right into the offense of this game. Uh, I am really excited now to see how the coaches respond because I hadn't considered that point. And hearing your perspective on it as a former player is awesome because I never would have thought that coaches would have different game plans for different kinds of weather if they aren't sure about what they're gonna get because it does matter. There's a difference between rain and wind and you know everything else. It all plays a factor, especially when things are so cold to start with. Um, yeah, you hit the nail on the head for my first point offensively. Um, and I agree that Tevin Coleman brings your power element and that that is going to be a major factor in this game. However, if it snows and we're talking true snow, not like the, the freezing rain or the ice that's going to get on the ground and get sloppy. If it snows, Michael Carter can shine because it's already difficult enough trying to tackle that guy in space. And then when you factor in the snow and trying to move around in the snow, it could be a replay of LaShawn McCoy. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see the running game. It has to be your feature. It has to be the, the first and foremost part of your offense. And whether it's Tevin Coleman and Michael Carter or Tevin Coleman or Michael Carter, et cetera, get these guys the ball run down the Bills' throats first and foremost, because your offensive line is kicking butt in the run game recently. Mm -hmm. Absolutely kicking butt in the freaking run game. Dan Feeney had his lapses in pass protection in uh, sorting out assignments and a couple of pressures that he gave up um, against the Buccaneers, but in the run game, oh my goodness, was he out there just swarming people. Uh, Ty Johnson, his biggest run of the day. Uh, he goes on an outside zone to the right, and Dan Feeney puts a reach block on Dominican Sue that made my jaw drop. <laughs> my poor girlfriend was sitting next to me while, while I was watching this game, and I squealed like a little girl, shouting, Dan Feeney, what a block, as Tevin, as uh, Ty Johnson gets the corner, and it goes to the outside, scared the hell out of her with her headphones in. She thought something bad had happened. Uh, mm -hmm. The O-line is playing great. Yes. Specifically, run blocking and specifically zone run blocking mm -hmm. don't go away from that yes keep featuring that that has been the engine of your offense recently zach wilson did a great job in the pass game 100 mm -hmm. and that you can't ignore that either you got to trust him and we'll get into that next you got to trust him to continue playing well but in this game with this weather and these elements against this team you do not win if you cannot establish the run it is the first point without a doubt yes Yes, I'm with you on that. I'm with you 100%. In cold weather, especially in December, in places like Buffalo. 
and it'll be January, mm-hmm. not to cut you off, but this is now the seventh, the eighteenth oh, week. No, it's okay, yeah. but it's the eighteenth yeah. week, and so they added an extra week. This game is now in January, but we're all used to the last game of the year being in December. Yes. Before we get yeah. any other comments yeah. on that, yes, I'm aware the game is in January. I'm aware that it is 2022. Uh, Lamont and I are yeah. not stuck yeah. in the past. We are recording live, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, yeah. thank you for that correction. That yeah. makes it even worse. It's January. <laughs> yeah, it's January. Yeah. In weather where it is cold, especially in the secondary, they do not want to tackle big backs. Secondary players want no part of that. So that's why I like Tevin Coleman mixing in Carter because he gives you the shiftiness, especially if you if Coleman can get in the game and get the defense, the defenders thinking, okay, I I got to run full speed and really give it to yep. this guy. Comes now when Carter hard. gets into the game, now they're coming downhill hard. Carter makes a guy miss, and now he can go hit a long run, possibly for a touchdown. Um, my second point, which I think is going to lead into something that you're going to talk about, is, and this is going to be something that regardless of the weather, I think that the Jets will be able to do this, something that the Patriots, I didn't think that they could do, and that is Zach Wilson has the arm to throw through win. I really think that he has the arm to throw through win. So my next point, um, which I do believe that you're going to talk about this, and I think we're on the same page with this point, is Zach Wilson's play, is let Zach Wilson throw the ball. Let's showcase, let, let's showcase his arm. He really impressed me this past week with his ability, the way he, he got better working in the park, pocket. He showed me that he's got the arm that when he really, when his, listen, when his footwork and his technique is phenomenal, that man can throw the ball. He can throw the ball. So my next point is let's see what Zach Wilson can do in bad weather conditions with his arm. Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, outside of the coaching staff. Now, as you laid out, this is going to be the test of the game for me. This is going to be who I'm putting most of my attention on, uh, harder than I normally do when I'm just watching the game live uh, and subsequently when I get to the film of it. But Zach Wilson, how he handles the elements is going to say a lot for his future and the future success of this team going forward. Because like we've now talked about, you're going to have to play in Buffalo at the end of the year. You're going to have to play in New England at the end of the year. And those teams are going to be good as long as their coaching staffs and their front offices are in place the way that they are and as long as they have the players on their team that they seem to have as long as josh allen is there mac jones has the opportunity to continue what he has been doing at the very least i think he'll be effective enough to to not cost them games Mm -hmm. you know this is going to be a tough division the dolphins are no joke either they won 10 games last year they you know they had a seven game win streak this year you know this is Mm -hmm. going to be a tough tough division and you win it get up north you win it in the elements at the end of the year. When it comes down to this, I go back as I was, we were talking about before the year last win and get in scenario. I can remember the bills have a win and get in scenario at the moment. If they can beat the jets this week, they will be the first, uh, they will clinch the AFC East and be the AFC East champions. If they don't, they can still become the AFC East champions, but they need the Patriots to lose. I'm pretty sure is how it ends up working out. They control their own destiny. Buffalo's playing to win. They want to secure that, that AFC East crown. 100%. 100%. That's that's not an option. They're going to be going full stop. Last time the Jets were in that scenario was 2015. They were playing in Buffalo with a win and get in scenario. They beat the Buffalo Bills, get to 11 wins. They will get in the playoffs uh, for the first time in about five years at that point. And they didn't win. They lost to the Bills who were nowhere near what they are now. The Jets were by far the better team expected to go in there and beat the Buffalo Bills. No problem. They didn't. Pittsburgh Steelers needed to lose with the Jets losing for the Jets to still get in. Steelers won their game. I forget who they played, but it was an upset and Jets missed the playoffs. So you have an opportunity as the Jets to play spoiler at the very least, not let them win the AFC East and take away that crown and do your part to give them a loss at the end of the year. And this is a team that's going to be going all out. This is a team that's not going to be hesitating for any particular reason. If I remember correctly last year, was either the the second to last or last game of the year they played the Buffalo Bills and the Bills I think had clinched the two seed at that point and were resting most of their starters and Matt Barkley started the game and threw for 300 yards on the Jets. Mm-hmm. This is not going to be that day. 
No. Buffalo is coming. This is playoff practice. This is what this is. This is let's go get our, our sword sharpened before we get into the postseason. And it's the Jets. We're not going to overlook them. We're going to make sure that we go out and handle business and get on the right foot going into the postseason. Mm-hmm. You got to bring you got to bring your A game, specifically for Zach Wilson. How are you going to handle this defense? How are you going to mm-hmm. handle throwing in the elements? Are you going to keep your footwork as clean as it was last week when the ground is wet? Mm-hmm. Are you going to be able to be as comfortable in the pocket when you're maybe worried about slipping when you're trying to escape or any other things that could be going on in your mind? It's going to be important. And it's something that he's going to have to do for the future of his career with the Jets. If he mm-hmm. wants the Jets to succeed, you're going to have to go battle Allen for the AFC East in Buffalo and come out on top. So that's going to be, you know, a really important factor of this game is how he handles that. And that's going to yep. lead me to my next point offensively, uh, which I agree is trust him to throw, give him the opportunities to throw. Don't take away his, his arm and his talent throwing the ball after what you just saw was capable of. And what you said earlier in, uh, in our recording here actually surprised me a little bit. You said the college stuff worked. It did yeah. work. Do it again. Because you don't got any receivers left to win down the field if Barrios isn't playing. Yes. So this is not a game where as much as I would love to say, trust Zach Wilson, trust him to be the guy that's going to win down the field, trust him that's going to be the guy that's going to, to execute and, and, and pull things off. You know, I agree. And I think that he is going to have those opportunities. And I think he'll be more successful than, than not when he gets those opportunities. But if Barrios doesn't play, you don't got a, 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 any leading receiver. You don't got mm-hmm. anything. You, you just don't. So you're going to have to manufacture guys getting open and you're going to have to manufacture yards. So specifically, the one thing that I want to see them incorporate, and it's something I know they have done before, they did it against Jacksonville. It just didn't get to be showcased because Zach Wilson handed the ball off but I want to see them start running read option with Zach Wilson. I mm-hmm. want to see them read to the defensive end and either give an unblocked player on the front that they aren't going to have to worry about in the run game. And if it's either Carter or Coleman, that's getting the ball, they are going to have the backside defender unblocked and either stuck there standing, waiting for Zach Wilson, or mm-hmm. they're going to crash down with the run. And Zach Wilson's going to have a clean lane to the edge. Mm -hmm. Then you can also work in the glance game, the RPO game with the routes behind it, especially against Buffalo, which is a zone defense. You're going to have those linebackers over the middle. If you can influence them to come down, you can get the ball behind them on the glance routes. Mm -hmm. I think this is your only shot on offense for consistent yards when you aren't under center trying to do your power running game. Yes. When you need a counter to your shotgun drop back game, when you need a counter to you know, any of your other shotgun plays, I think this is it. I think this is how you continue to generate a run game out of your shotgun plays. I think this is how you take advantage of Zach Wilson's athleticism Mm -hmm. where we've seen what he can do now in back-to-back weeks, first with his legs, now with his arm. Let's put the two together. Let's make the Buffalo Bills defend Zach Wilson like teams, like the Buffalo Bills make teams defend Josh Allen. And Mm -hmm. I think that's how you can get an advantage when right now your skill players are not looking not looking too great it it really is going to be a tough day for zach wilson to come out and succeed as a quarterback with the type of offensive talent that he has but if he has any opportunity to do it i think it's through the rpo and the read option before that Mm -hmm. yeah no i'm 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 with you on that the pending the weather i'm not sure especially in the last game of, of the season if i want zach wilson doing a lot of read option stuff if, if you're not a guy that's used to playing in this type of weather and if the footing is off, then I think you increase the chances of him getting hurt. Now, if, 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 if we're talking about, a, you know, a field conditions that's just wet, where we're not dealing with sleet, where we're not dealing yeah. with part of the field that's frozen. Agreed. That obviously has a lot to do with it. Yeah, yeah. Then I, I, I want, based on how Zach Wilson played last week, I want him to continue to build on that and I want him out of this game healthy. Agreed. That is that that is what I want. If I'm the Jets, if I have if if I'm planning on signing Barrios back, quite frankly, I don't play him this week. I listen. If you're bringing Barrios back, you need to put these other wide receivers out there and see what they can do. Because as far as I'm concerned, yep. you have Barrios, you have Crowder, mm-hmm. you have Moore, and you have Davis. That's it. Everybody else can go. And I think yep. that this is the game where those guys get a chance to prove that. Hey, 
you want to stay with the Jets or you're auditioning for for another yeah. team. Um, as we transition to defense, um, for me, I think my my points, they kind of go together. And, and I really only have one point. And I said this earlier. You just want the secondary to, to build on the momentum that they have from the Bucks game. Um, for me, I, this, this game comes down to one thing. If we're talking about having bad weather, this game comes down to do not allow Buffalo to get their run game going. I'm not a fan of Buffalo's run game. Quite frankly, I think the most effective run that they've had is when they get down to the red zone and they run a quarterback sweep with Allen. Outside of that, um, there's really nothing special about the Bills running game. And, and that's why I'm hoping that we get bad weather to where, you know, you're minimizing the throws because, quite frankly, I'll take the Jets running game over the Bills running game. When I'm Great. thinking about from a scheme standpoint, when I'm thinking about the players that are running the ball, I'll take the Jets backs over, over Singletary. I like Breida. Not sure if he's playing, but I do like him. I think he's the best of the of the Buffalo Bills running backs. But for me, defensively, I have one point. Don't allow Buffalo to get the run game going. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That was one of my two points was make them beat you on the ground. Um, and because I don't think they can. And so if you get allow them to get the run game going, I think it will be an issue. But I also yeah. think that you can stop it. I also mm -hmm. think that you can feel comfortable with your defensive line, especially with how they played against Tampa, um, shutting down Tampa's run game against a really good offensive line. Foley yes. Fadakasi had a couple really nice run stuffs where he just came in like a bat out of hell and blew up a run play. I think mm -hmm. you can you can do some of that here as well. Um, so I agree. If Buffalo can run the ball, it's going to be tough. But if Buffalo can run the ball, it might have more to do with Buffalo than the Jets. Yes. So – my first point in agreement with yours, but not in direct counter to it is make them stop beat you on the ground because Josh Allen can throw in the wind. Josh mm -hmm. Allen can throw in snow. Josh Allen has is played there for multiple, multiple years now. And the reason mm -hmm. they drafted him seventh overall is because he came out of Wyoming where they did it there too. Now you're hoping Zach Wilson being in Utah his whole life has played some games in snow before. He's mm -hmm. played some games in some cold weather, and I think he has. But it is going to be different when it's the East Coast air that's a lot thicker as opposed to the Utah mountain air that's a lot thinner. Completely different animals. So that's going to be, uh, you know, huge. But Josh Allen, we know, doesn't struggle there. So this is still going to be a game where you have to defend the pass. And yep. that is the Bills' main area of attack. They're what they want to do offensively. This is the, the old Bill Belichick strategy of defense in my mind that I go through whenever I'm scouting a defense is what do they want to do first? What is their number one thing that they want to do offensively? Can you take it away? Mm -hmm. That's first and foremost. Their number one thing they want to do offensively is throw the ball to the Stephon Diggs. Mm -hmm. So my answer for the last game of the season, again, me being my answer, will the Jets end up doing this? I'm not sure. But what I would do if I was in this situation, game planning a defense, I am doubling Stefan Diggs or I am letting Bryce Hall travel with him. One mm. of those two. Mm -hmm. And I am setting up my defense to where if I have to bracket him with a safety or if I have to, like I said, let Hall travel, whatever the situation is, I am putting all my focus on Stefan Diggs. Emmanuel Sanders is likely not to play in this game. He hasn't been much of a factor this year anyway. You have Cole Beasley, who's one of their receivers, also has really not done anything. You've had some of the younger guys like Gabe Davis and Isaiah McKenzie step up, makes a couple of plays. But like we said, the Jets' young corners have been playing well. They've been, they've been rebounding. They're doing okay. So let's see. Again, last game of the year, do you want to go compete? Do you want to be in this league? Or do we need to go draft or sign a corner in free agency or the draft? Let's go see how you guys handle, handle yourselves. But I'm not going to let Stefan Diggs beat me. I'm mm -hmm. not going to let Stefan Diggs beat me like he did the first time the Jets played the Bills because they were comfortable playing their static defense. We talked about it. It was one of our first episodes. Playing their static defense and trusting Brandon Eccles, who has improved a lot since then. And I defended Eccles then like I'm going to now. Mm -hmm. He was in a tough situation, but we got on them for putting their players in a tough situation and letting Stephon Diggs be one-on-one -on -one with Brandon Eccles on the outside. Don't do it again. First and foremost, don't do it again. Don't make the same mistake twice. 
look, improve from your own film. You want to talk about grading the coaching staff? This is going to be it for me. Improve from your own film. Don't make the same mistake uh, twice as a defense. And Robert Sala is the head coach. To me, this is going to fall on him more so than Jeff Ulbrich as Robert Sala is the head coach, let alone that as a defensive head coach should step in and say, we need to do something different. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be Jeff Ulbrich's job. It should be Robert Sala's job. So I want to see how they do offensively. I think you, I agree. You can't let Buffalo run down your throat, but I also don't think they can anyway. So I'm more worried about stopping Stephon Diggs. Do what you can in the past game to take away Stephon Diggs and make Buffalo beat you on the ground. Yeah, no, listen, I'm with you on that. And my last point is I'm going to go back to something that I, that defensively that I would have liked for, to see them do against the Bucks that they didn't do enough of. Bring pressure. Bring Agreed. pressure. Don't, don't don't they have to. Yeah, you yeah, bring pressure. Force 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 Allen to get the ball out of his hands because Buffalo likes to do a lot of crossing routes just like the Bucks. Yep. Whether it's Beasley, whether it's Diggs doing kind of a short motion and then coming yep. in on that shallow cross, Buffalo loves to do those types of things. So for me, bring pressure. This is a great opportunity to work on your blitz package. Yep. It's not something that you do all year long. It'll be a good change up. You're trying to get a victory. Um, you know, you don't want to leave your young corners on the island. I say bring pressure and force Allen to make the throws that Brady made, knowing that he can't because it, because it's Brady. Yeah. So for me, yeah. my last point, my last point on this game, um, especially for defense, is bring pressure. Listen, you have nothing to lose. Yep. Uh, you know, whether you win or lose, it doesn't, I don't think it changes much. Maybe the draft status and things of that nature, but it's not going to change that much. You don't play, not, you can't play, you can't play like that. You can't play you know, worried about your draft status. You never know what guys are going to play well or not play well. It matters yep. more half the time where they go than who they are before they even get drafted. Don't, you can't play like that. It's way more important for this team to go into Buffalo and put out as good of an effort as they can for the future, for the next year when they're going to have to go into Buffalo and for the many years after that. Not to cut you off uh, at the end, but I'm, I completely agree. Don't worry about the draft status of this game. Play to win. Play to win. That's it. And, that, and that's, that's pretty much it for me. Don't allow Buffalo to run the ball and bring pressure. That's, yeah. that's defensively to me, that's, that's the game plan. Yeah. Last thing I'm going to add, just to echo what you said, the Jets got one sack of Tom Brady uh, and it came on a corner blitz from Michael Carter. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Took a scheme pressure from their corner. Wasn't their defensive line. The defensive mm-hmm. line isn't getting pressure. So you have mm-hmm. to blitz. I agree. Um, I think that doesn't, let's get into our bets and get on out of here. And finish yes. off here. I'll go ahead and lead off. Um, got an interesting bet here because the spread for this game really shocked me, especially considering how the Jets have played last week. And I understand the circumstances. Buffalo is playing hard. They're in their last game of the year. It's in Buffalo. I get all of that. The Jets are the Jets. They're four and 12. I get all of that. The spread for this game is Buffalo minus 16 and a half. Wow. That's 17 points. Yeah, that's two touchdowns and a field goal. That's a lot. That's a heck of a lot. And after the performance that we just saw the Jets have in a game where I think it could be very ugly with the weather and you might have a a gritty defensive football game, 16 and a half points is a lot. Yeah. So rather than take the Jets at plus 16 and a half for minus 110, I had to find something in the positive. Mm -hmm. So I went and I found the alternate spread and I'm going to take the jets plus 10 and a half. And that Mm -hmm. is at a plus 165. Okay. Because I could see a scenario where the bills win by 10 and it's a ugly 17, seven, or you get a couple of turnovers that lead to some scores and you get a, you know, a 24, 14, but Mm -hmm. I really don't see a way that the Buffalo offense, especially with how the Jets offense is playing and the fact that they're not just giving the ball back every three plays and giving offenses a million chances to score, mm-hmm. I don't see a scenario in which the Buffalo offense wins by 17 points. I, I just and, – and I also think that it would be – is it bold? Yeah, but it's the end of the year, and I'm not going to not bet on the Jets at the end of the year. Couldn't do it. It's the last game of the season. I got to throw down one more positive bet on them. And I legitimately think that there is a Buffalo by 10 scenario that happens. And that extra half point is going to save me. I, I, listen, I, 
I like that. What is the over under on this game? 42 and a half, I think, but I can double check that. And you no, know no, me, no. I don't trust, I don't trust no, 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 no over, no under in the Jets anymore, not with their defense. I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to play the high side that there is going to be bad weather, and I'm going to take the under. I can see that. That'll yeah. that'll be my bet. I, I, I this is I, I feel like it's going to be to me. It's simple. Bad weather. I'm taking the under. Yeah. Good weather. I'm taking the Bills on the spread. Yeah. I think Buffalo is going to come out in good weather and try to blow the Jets out so yeah. they can get their starters off of the field. Yeah. But if it's bad weather, I could easily see a situation where, where, like you said, it's going to be a close game. Maybe yeah. some, maybe something funny happens where touchdowns are scored, but in bad yeah. weather, especially if there's win involved, I with a Buffalo team that to me doesn't have a run game that you need to respect. Um, I'm going to take the under. So I'm going to take the chance that there is going to be bad weather and I'm going to take the under in this game. Yeah, I like that idea. Definitely. Weather is always going to make it difficult. And, you know, the Bills have a, a saying that goes back to the time under Marv Levy in the 90s. They went to four straight Super Bowls. And it was when it's too cold for them, it's just right for us. And yep. this could be a situation <laughs> where that ends up happening. It also could mm -hmm. be a situation where the Jets are ready to, to fight and they put on a fun game. Um, I'm going to throw one more extra little prop bet on here. I wanted to make this my bet of the week, but I couldn't find any listed odds for it specifically. So I didn't want to just outright say it. But if for anyone that has a prop bet that they want to throw down that they can find, uh, I believe actually before this game is going to start, you're going to have legalized betting in New York City opening up. So anybody, if we have listeners in New York City that want to go throw a prop bet down in a sports book, Jets over 100 rushing yards, team total. I am going to take that bet. I like because that. I think because I think when you factor in Michael Carter and Tevin Coleman and potentially Zach Wilson in the quarterback run game, even if it's a few times a game, I think they could get over 100 yards rushing, whatever. Again, I don't know what the odds are on that, but I think that that could be a fun prop bet to throw down. And I think it's a good shot. ahead. I like this. I like that bet. To be honest with you, I feel like that's a gimme. Yeah, I want. I couldn't find odds, but I thought about it all week. I was like, as soon as uh, after this game, I was like, oh, I'm taking snow game, bad weather. Jets running game is working well. I was, I couldn't find odds. I was so upset. I wanted to make it my official bet, but I'll throw it as a as an extra to end the season. Yeah, no, I, I like that bet. I, I like all. <laughs> I like all three of the bets. For me, it's just going to come down to the weather. It's going to be an under, or it's going to be. I'm taking I'm taking Buffalo by at the spread. And I really I'm hoping that we get the weather. I know here in Maryland, we're supposed to get some snow starting tonight. That's going to kind of go into the yeah. next day. And I right, listen, that that Buffalo weather is not to be played with. No, it is not. No, it is not. And so I, I like those bets, man. I like those bets. I know we didn't do well last week. Um, or at least I know I didn't win last week. Uh, I think I took the Bucks at a minus seven and a half and under 50 points so i hit the under 50 but i'm gonna be completely honest i don't remember my bet last week i can't remember what you did last week um i don't remember what you did last week i do know oh, that well I you know it would it would help if i would look in the right note that i had the jets plus 12 and a half so i hit ah you hit okay okay yeah. that's uh yeah that's what's up man well listen i'm i'm good i i, I love our picks um, I, I tell you what, I know that Buffalo is the last game of the season. Uh, I would love to come back and do one more show where we kind of finish up, kind of wrap up the Jets and then possibly talk about just some of our picks for for the playoffs next week. Yeah, yeah, that could definitely be some fun. Uh, maybe we could do maybe do something a little bit off the rails. Maybe we could uh, both do a little playoff racket and do our official predictions. I like it. Let's do it. Let's I like it. it. Sounds like a plan. Cool. All right. Full yes, playoff predictions tomorrow. Uh, thank you guys again. So, or not tomorrow, next week. Excuse me. Uh, thank you guys again so much for listening. We will be back next week. Like I said, full playoff predictions. Wrap up the last game of this year for the Jets. Maybe sneak in some free agency and some draft talk in there if we have the time. But until then, thank you guys again so much for listening. We will be back. Lamont, parting thoughts. The floor is yours. All right. You can catch me um, on Twitter at CoachJordan34 or on Instagram at LamontJordan underscore 34. And you guys can find me at Andrew Golden underscore 17 and make sure you guys follow at 
believe in jets podcast on twitter b-l-e-a-v underscore in underscore jets that is make sure, again thank you guys for listening we'll be back next week